Simon here from Simon Says Cycling. In this video, I'm going to ask the head of education, Dave Shell from Training Peaks, specifically questions on what is IF or intensity factor, what is TSS or training stress score, what is EF, what is VI, what are these um, abbreviations and numbers that we see when we click on a specific workout, what do they mean, what do they tell us about our training, and how can we use them to help us improve over time. So up next, my interview with Dave Shell. So Dave, when people look at their training and in a specific session and they open it up, they're going to see a bunch of numbers. They're going to see some abbreviations like, you know, TSS, IF, EF. A lot of people don't really know what these mean. So I'm going to run through a few and I'd love for you just to give a brief description of what they mean. So starting with IF, what is that? So IF stands for intensity factor, and that's really a way for an athlete to look at how hard or how intense a workout was. Um, the way we calculate IF is first we take a look at the athlete's threshold or the maximum effort they could hold for around one hour. Um, once we know that number, then we look at the normalized power for cycling in this case. Um, we look at the normalized power for that workout and then we would divide that normalized power by the athlete's threshold. So let's say that your threshold on the bike is 250 watts, and your normalized power for this workout was 180 watts. We would divide 180 by 250, and that would give us an intensity factor of 0.72, or around 72% of your threshold. What is TSS? So training stress score, or TSS, is giving you a score for each and every workout that you do. And the way we calculate that is we look at the intensity factor for that workout, and then we look at the duration. So using that um, example of the ride at um, 0.72 intensity factor, the training stress score for that would be around um, 50 for an hour. So let's say that you went out and rode for 72% of your threshold for around an hour, then that would be about 50 training stress score. Um, there's a long formula that we use to come up with training stress score, but really the easiest way to come up with it is intensity factor squared times duration in hours times 100. And so that's where we end up with that 50 is 0.72 times 0.72, give me around um, 0.49 IF times one hour times 100, we end up with about um, 50 TSS, if that makes sense. And what is uh, EF? EF is efficiency factor, and that's really looking at your output compared to your input. And that number is not really useful for any um, one workout, but what you'd want to do is you'd want to compare that number for similar workouts over time. And you would hope to see that number going up because that would imply that you're putting out more power at the same or a lower heart rate. So greater output for less input. And another one I see is VI. VI stands for variability index. And this is one that's really good for um, either time trialist or uh, triathletes. And that just means how variable a, the workout was. And so if we go back to the idea of normalized power, which is the estimate of the metabolic cost of a ride if you would have paced it perfectly steadily, um, we look at the normalized power for a ride compared to the average power for a ride. And so the more evenly paced it was, the closer those numbers are going to be and the closer to one you would be. So let's say that um, your normalized power was 200 watts and your average power is 200 watts that would be a uh, variability index of 1.0. Now, as the variability gets greater, then that number is going to get higher. And you, for triathlon, we would say, or for time trial, we would say that you would want that number to be um, around 1.05 or less. Now, when you get into road races and mountain biking, that number is going to get bigger and bigger. Um, in the case of mountain biking, you might see a variability index of 1.31 or more. And uh, what is PR versus HR? Um, so PW versus or PW colon HR is power to heart rate. You can, um, if you're a runner, you might also see PA colon HR, which would be pace to heart rate, and that's really looking at your decoupling or what your heart rate does compared to your power or pace over time. Um, and so this is really just a measure of aerobic efficiency. 
And it really depends on how long of an event you're training for, but generally you would want to see less than 5% decoupling and decoupling means how far apart they go. Um, and so if you're training for a three hour race, when you're doing a training ride, um, a steady training ride, you would hope that that decoupling would be 5% or less um, indicating that you're aerobically fit for that duration. Great, <clears throat> great information. I know uh, one of my clients was asking me for a little, like a summary or cheat sheet. I know you have a glossary, but you, you were telling me earlier that you're um, working on a blog post where you're going to summarize all of these in a blog post. Is that correct? Yeah, we're, um, I just finished a blog post, which should be up in the next couple of weeks, I believe. And it will really just um, focus on the core metrics of training peaks um, and really to help a user that's new to it understand um, these metrics that everything that uh, training peaks is based off of. So functional threshold power, intensity factor, training stress score, and then getting into the performance management chart, CTL, ATL, TSB. Um, so look for that in the next couple of weeks as well. And as a coach and using the performance management chart, I know some of my clients are using it as well. Um, you know, sometimes we get hung up on the numbers and, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll hear a client say I'm negative 20 and that might affect them mentally. Or as a coach, you know, I'll, we'll have the big build phase and you'll see a lot of fitness growth. But then you'll, it's the, the chart is showing a loss of fitness as we come into season. And we discussed this earlier and I wondered if you could just touch on a little bit of how to use these metrics in the healthiest way, um, you know, realizing that it's it's not it shouldn't really determine your performance. It's more just giving you some guidelines. I wonder if you could just touch on that again, like we spoke about earlier. Right. Yeah. And so the the thing to keep in mind when you're looking at the performance management chart or um, really any metric for that matter is that these are all models. They're mathematical models. They're not perfect. Um, but they're meant to be tools, and they're meant to help guide us in our training and recovery, um, things like that. But at the end of the day, use it as a tool to help you in your training, but don't just be aware that it's not 100% accurate. And just because a number says one thing doesn't mean that you're going to perform a certain way. It's really just to provide you one more way of looking at your training and looking at are you being consistent? Are are you plateauing or are you building um, fitness or training world and things along those lines? Because I'll notice, you know, if I, if I build my clients, you know, build their training up in the off season and they're going to gain a lot of fitness, um, you know, CTLs, everything's going up. And then um, once we come into season, you know, a lot of them are working. They're doing always a similar time frame every week. And the chart almost looks like they're losing fitness, right? But yet they might be putting out some of their, you know, the best numbers. So, um, also, again, there. I don't know if you have anything to add on that, but I know we discussed a little bit about that earlier. Yeah, and um, we tend to see that a lot of times that in the base period that the that we'll see the CTL or the fitness rising over time as athletes are putting in a lot of long rides and things like that. But then maybe they get into um, a build phase or a more specific phase where they're doing a lot more intensity, but maybe reducing the volume. And since the um, CTL is a product of both volume and intensity. Since we're subtracting one of those things, you will um, possibly start to see that fall a little bit. But the thing to keep in mind is that the performance management chart doesn't tell you how specific um, your training is. And so even though you're seeing your training load fall, because after all that CTL is really just a measure of your training load over the last 42 days, that might be falling. But your, your race specific intensity is climbing and therefore your fitness for your um, event that you're targeting is also climbing at the same time. Awesome. Great stuff. Well, thanks again, Dave. This was some really great information. I know my clients and my email list are going to really enjoy learning more about training peaks. I'm sure you'll get a few converters to training peaks after this video. So again, thanks again for taking the time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Dave Shell. Hope you learned a lot more about training peaks and how it can benefit your cycling. Make sure you check out my coaching membership. It's $49 a month, free for 30 days trial. So try that out. Fully paid uh, benefits you're going to get for those 30 days for free. Cancel anytime. And you're going to get training for race fitness or regular fitness. You're going to get options to all my training plans. And you're going to get coaching from me. So really an incredible value. Check that out, $49 a month. And uh, you'll learn also more about Training Peaks in my membership group. So with that, I want to wish you all the best with your cycling. Go out there, be the best you can be, and have fun.